Again, once more, welcome. Uh, my name is Hubert Inhäuser. I'm the technical uh, officer at PFC International. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be your host uh, today on this webinar. Uh, let me show you uh, or program what we have for us today. First, there will be a brief introduction from uh, my side uh, about PFC uh, International. And then we will continue uh, with the contribution from our colleagues in Japan uh, on the presentation of the Sustainable Green Ecosystem Council. And at the end, if there will be any request for questions and answers, we will have some time to do this as well. So having said this, uh, let us start with the introduction from PFC uh, International. PFC stands for a program for the endorsement of forest certification systems. We are an alliance of independent national forest certification systems under the umbrella of PFC International. And um, what we provide is a benchmark, sustainability benchmark system, which then uh, national, forest uh, national forest certification systems will develop and will meet these sustainability benchmarks. This is a voluntary mechanism promoting sustainable forest management through independent third party certification. And we are proud that we are the world's largest forest certification system and provider of three quarters of the world's sustainably managed wood. Here you can see our global coverage. Uh, as of today, we have 55 members across the globe and through 48 indoor system, we cover 320 million hectares of forest. The Japanese scheme was submitted uh, to PS3 International in April this year for assessment. PFC assessment is carried out by an independent assessor. This is yet to be appointed. Uh, part of this assessment is um, a 60 days public consultation, which we opened for the Japanese system on 17th May. And uh, all the stakeholders uh, have the possibility to comment uh, on the scheme until 16th of July. And I would like to encourage everyone uh, to do so because the feedback is important for us and also for the assessors, because all the comments submitted to PEFC International during this consul, uh, public consultation will be considered by the assessor uh, in the assessment report. And that was uh, from my side, this brief uh, introduction. And uh, I would like to ask now uh, our colleagues at PEFC Japan uh, to take over and continue uh, with the presentation of the Sustainable Green Ecosystem Council scheme. Thank you, Herbert, and good morning for you. Now is uh, morning time, maybe. Uh, although details will be explained by Shigeru later, but I would like to make some, some brief introduction about the revised standard of the SDEC uh including the process and uh, just a little about the content itself uh, the revised standard has been prepared based on the procedure described in the pf pf pfc standard taking into account of development related to forest management in japan and uh, recent PFC standard revision. The revision process started in June 2020 with the agreement of the SDEC General Assembly and the necessary steps have been taken, including public announcement, meeting with stakeholders, public comments process. Before the final draft document were submitted to the ESDEC Board of Directors. That is on 30th March, 2021 for its approval. The content 
of the document are basically compliant with the revised PEFC standards, with the exception of enhancement of the Ainu, it's an uh, indigenous people in Japan, related parts, Ainu related parts, reflecting the recent enforcement of the new act for the Ainu. In this situation, we believe that any difficulty will not be found for the, the endorsement, but I don't know the assessment will be done and uh, uh, I hope the, the result will be good. Now, Shigeru will explain details from now, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Kajia-san. So I uh, let me firstly uh, share my presentation. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, good morning and good afternoon and uh, uh, thank you Hubert and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, it is my uh, great pleasure to be given this opportunity to present about this Jack revised standard uh, today. My name is Shigeru Takahara, Senior Officer of SJEC PFC Japan. Uh, my presentation is divided into three parts. Firstly, forestry context in Japan and its relation to SJEC standard. Uh, secondly, uh, standard setting process uh, of this revision. And thirdly, the system elements, particularly focusing on what changed in the revision this time. Firstly, let me explain uh, forestry context in Japan and SGIC standard. Um, Japan is a country uh, located in East Asia. It's uh, an island country and stretching from uh, north to south about 3,000 kilometers. Japan's uh, forest area covers 25 million hectares and it is two thirds of the, our uh, total land area. It uh, mostly exactly overlaps with the uh, mountainous area because uh, most of all of our plain land are already converted into uh, farmland or residential area or urban area. Uh, this slide shows the transition of forest resources in Japan. And uh, as you can see in the uh, left-hand side figure, the forestry area in Japan has been basically uh, very stable in these 50 or 60 years that is around 55 million hectare. And the, for the blue color, it shows the mermaid forest. The mermaid forest increased uh, from 1950s until beginning of the 1980s. And after that, also the area of mermaid forest uh, has been stable uh, and around it was around 10 million hectare. Compared to the stability of the forest area, the growing stock has been uh, continuously including increasing in these 50 or 60 years. The particularly uh, for the man-made forest, as you can see in this blue color, the growing stock of man-made fro forest has increasing uh, drastically, drastically uh, since uh, these 50 or 60 years. And uh, uh, 
Uh, let me show how it went. <laughs> the above picture shows uh, the mountainous area in Shiga prefecture, uh, western part of Japan in 90, around in 1945. Uh, our forest then was, uh, as you can see, uh, significantly uh, degraded and uh, uh, bare land in mountainous area was expanding. Since then, uh, in Japan, we had made a much effort to replanting uh, those uh, bare lands. And so we enjoy uh, currently, as shown in the below picture, in the same place, the uh, relatively uh, green and rich forest in, uh, uh, in mountainous area. So we have been make uh, very much effort of the replanting of those uh, degraded uh, area uh, in this, from 1950s until about 1980s. Uh, this shows the forest ecosystem in Japan by dominant species. Uh, there are both uh, coniferous forests and the broad reef forest about uh, half and half. And uh, we have also a mixed forest with the coniferous species and the broadleaf forest. So we have a vera, uh, we have a variety of the forest ecosystems. I would like to point out the two main species uh, that is uh, Japanese cedar uh, shown in dark green and uh, Japanese cypress shown in uh, light green. Both are indigenous species uh, in Japan and used for uh, plantation of the man-made forest, man forest ex extensively. And those two species are important because for it is uh, used rice for construction, uh, particularly for housing construction. Uh, this shows the age distribution of man-made forests in Japan. Uh, the major species, I already said, it's uh, Japanese cedar and Japanese cypress. In 1966, as shown in light green, the most of the man-made forest is uh, very young, uh, less than 10 years old. But right now, as shown in dark green, uh, more than half of the, these man-made forests are over 50 years old, and it's generally considered as already matured for harvesting. And so we have now a very big base uh, of man-made forest for supply uh, of timber. Uh, this shows the area of forest by ownership categories. About 30% of our forest is government owned a national forest. And about 11% uh, of our forest is publicly owned forests. Uh, that means the prefectural forests or a municipal forests. And the rest, about 58% is the private forests. So the ownership structure, the private forest dominates the ownership of the Japanese uh, forest. Uh, however, uh, our ownership structure of the private forest, private forests are relatively small. Uh, this shows the house forest, household forest owners by ownership scale. As you can see, uh, a household owns uh, less than five hectares, accounts for 74% of the number of the old households. And households owns from five to 10 hectares, uh, accounts for 13%. Uh, and both combined, 90% uh, of the households own only less than 10 hectares. So, uh, the, our ownership uh, structure is uh, very small, 
so that that is the one issue for the efficient uh, uh, forestry. Uh, this shows the, our uh, planning system in Japan. In the national level, we have a basic plan for forest and forestry that defines a long-term and comprehensive strategy. And under that, we have a nationwide forest plan uh, for the planning period of 15 years and uh, define the uh, more detailed uh, planning uh, strategy. And under this umbrella of national uh, plan, we have a regional uh, forest plan and also local forest improvement plan uh, stipulated by the municipal governments and also forest management plan uh, stipulated by the forest owners. And SJEC forest certification uh, is synergizing with those uh, forest local forest improvement plans and forest management plans that uh, is uh, applied in the actual field into the forest. And let uh, us look at the uh, uh, market of the timber in Japan. And this uh, slide shows the transition of demand and consumption by users. As you can see, the main uses of timber in Japanese market is as shown in yellow color, the wood and the pulp, a uh, wood pulp and ship, and shown in the green color, the lumber, particularly for construction and wooden houses. And uh, one interesting thing is fair wood. We had a significant demand for fair wood and charcoal until oh, 1960s. But since then, we have uh, actually no demand for fuel wood because the energy source had been changed to the fossil fuels. But recently, we had uh, now the fuel wood demand. Uh, that is basically for wood the biomass energy source as a uh, renewable energy. So we see the new development of the timber demand in Japan now. Uh, this is uh, the uh, shows the share of imported timber in Japanese market. Uh, in Japanese market, uh, the wood demand is uh, uh, relatively high and our domestic resources is limited so that the uh, imported timber is dominant in Japanese market. The Japan is a big importer of the timber. And the self-sufficiency is uh, at the lowest point, 18.8% uh, in 2002. But the self-sufficiency rate has been increasing since then because of the uh, growing uh, forest resources uh, in uh, Japan and its supply. Uh, now oh, it almost reaches to 36 to 37 percent. And uh, we expect the self-sufficiency uh, in Japan is going to grow oh, further. For the uh, lumber uses, uh, we uh, now see the new opportunity of the uh, timber utilization in Japanese market. Uh, like the engineered wood, uh, for example, uh, close laminated timber, and also high storied wooden building. In the right hand picture, it shows the seven storied wooden building uh, newly uh, constructed with all structural elements are made of wood near the Sendai station. And it's uh, got the SJEC PFC project certification. 
Uh, traditionally, uh, this kind of building was very difficult in Japan because uh, the uh, wooden building has been strictly regulated or prohibited in urban area in Japan uh, because of a very strict uh, fire uh, pre prevention regulation. But recently, uh, thanks to the development of the new technology for the pre prevention of the uh, fire for timber materials, now it began to be approved uh, to construct the wooden uh, building in urban area. So we see uh, this is a new opportunity for timber demand and also the certified uh, product. And uh, let me explain the briefly the history of SGX certification system. SGX certification system uh, was established in 2003 as a pure uh, domestic uh, certification system. Uh, it was uh, established uh, by the 74 members, including forestry and forest product industries, academies, environmental NGOs, and business sector. And after uh, that, 2011, we had the overall revision of SGX standard. That is done because we needed to meet the international standard of the ISO uh, that requires the independency uh, between the standard setting body uh, scheme owners and the certification body. And after uh, this uh, big revision, we became a member of the PFC Council in 2014. And after that, uh, SGEC applied for endorsement by the PFC for its standard. And June 2016, uh, SGEC was fastly endorsed by the PFC Council. Well, uh, uh, this is the launch of SGEC standard as a PFC endorsed international certification scheme in June 7, 2016. Uh, we had attendance of Mr. Ben Garnibalg. CEO of PFC, and also we had uh, attendance of Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado to this uh, ceremony. Uh, uh, so this is uh, our big event for the start of a new age uh, for SJEC. Well, let me uh, uh, reflect the, our relation, uh, the relation with FM and COC is certification and uh, sustainable forest managed policies in Japan. The, our certification system is synergizing with the forest planning system as I uh, explained before. And our standard uh, is also a measure to uh, verify the timber leg legality under the timber legality regulation in Japan. That was done through our uh, uh, DDS. And with the PLC uh, uh, endorsement, SGX standards is also one measure to promote the wood products export to the international market. And also SGX standards uh, support the integration of small forest owners through group certification. And of course, uh, SGEC forest management standards ensures the conservation of the biodiversity and uh, promotion of environmental services uh, through its FM standard. Uh, the SGEC certified forest area in Japan has been continuously increasing in these years from 2011 until 2020. The area now exceeds 2 million hectares. It accounts for about 
20% of the uh, man-made forests in Japan. Uh, number of the SGX COC certification is also uh, increasing uh, from uh, 2016 to uh, 2020. Of course, it's uh, uh, all to the endorsement of the PLC uh, of the SJEC in 2016. And also, uh, the, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it owe to the uh, Tokyo Olympics and the Paralympics because in Tokyo Olympics, Paralympics sustainable policies, uh, SJEC, PLC, as well as SFC is recognized as sustainable or timber or forest product sources uh, by a Olympic committee. Uh, this shows one of the example uh, in the field of regarding our SGEC standard uh, in Tochigi prefecture. A group of forest owners and also a group of small uh, forest industries uh, cooperated together to form a council uh, and with the support of the uh, municipal government, uh, they uh, are promoting their domestic uh, forest, domestic forest products into the market, uh, utilizing the SGEC uh, forest, forest management and COC standards. Uh, this shows another example of very good uh, certified forest in uh, Tottori Prefecture. Uh, it is a sugi uh, cedar forest more than 100 years with a very rich vegetation and uh, also the uh, various uh, environmental services uh, like uh, uh, supply of uh, water. Uh, our SJEC uh, COC system uh, run parallel to the PFC uh, system in Japanese market. We had also we have also SJEC COC uh, certified certified products and also PFC certified products. And SJEC certified products uh, shows that that this that products uh, meets the international requirements and also originated from the Japan's uh, domestic forests. Now uh, we are going to move on to the second uh, section, SJEC standard uh, revision process. In March, 2020, uh, we, have started, we have started periodical review and revision process. And we have decided we, uh, are, we went to revision process, to, uh, uh, revision process uh, directly without review process uh, because uh, PLC uh, standards has revised significantly uh, at that time and we needed to adjust our SGEC standard to the PLC standard. And in, on April 16th, 2020, SGEC PFC Japan informed the PFC Secretariat of its revision process. And June 2020, General Assembly of SGEC PFC Japan, the decision making body formally approved to start revision process of SGEC standard. On June 26, 2020, the start of the standard revision process was announced on our website. And from June to July, 2020, the working draft was formulated by secretary and also stakeholder mapping was carried out. As the national level stakeholders, as total 153 national level stakeholders was identified, including forest owners associations, business and industry, indigenous people, that means iron association, NGOs, scientific technological community, etc., And also local level stakeholders and individual certified organizations were uh, listed as the stakeholders. 
And on August 6, 2020, invitation to participate invitation to participation in the start and setting process was sent to all stakeholders via email, uh, post, and other uh, measures such as the, our website. And working draft was made open on the website also. On September 28, 2020, as shown in this uh, photograph, first standard management committee meeting was held. That was uh, in phase meeting as well as combined with uh, online meeting. And in this committee meeting, the inquiry draft was approved. From October to December 2020, for 60 days, the public consultation of the inquiry draft was carried out. And uh, we had a public comments, uh, 196 opinions and comments, including minor editorial comments. Uh, topics of major comments was shown below, who, such as sales of certified logs by FM certificate holders, like handing over of certification to another CB during certification period, access to CB's summary audit report, uh, a definition of, of forest conversion in the context of forestry in Japan, and acceptance of SJ claim by FM certificate holders by POC, and uh, uh, regarding the uh, FPIC guide for iron people and the relation between internal monitoring and internal audit, relation between forest plantation and man-made forests, as I will explain later, and on product claim of control sources. And from December 2020 until February 2021, amendment of inquiry draft based on these comments uh, were uh, carried about carried out by the secretariat, and on February 17, 2021, summary of public comments was made open on SGPUC Japan website, and on February 27, 2021, amended version of the inquiry draft was also made open on the website. And on March 2nd, 2021, second standard management committee meeting was held and uh, final draft uh, was approved and submitted to the council's meeting and the board of directors meeting. And on March 30th, 2021, a revised SGX standard documents formally adopted by councillors meeting and board of directors meeting and then uh, it was finalized. And April uh, 12, uh, 2021, revised SGX standard documents was made open on website. So these are our process of the standing setting, standard setting revision of standard setting process of this revision. And let me show you the fact uh, was changed in this revision. Firstly, let me explain the background of SGX standard revision. As I, uh, Mr. Kajia uh, has already explained, there is a revision of PSC standards like a standard setting, sustainable forest management, chain of custody, uh, standard, uh, all, all uh, major uh, standards of PSC has amended uh, from 2017 and 2019, and we needed to adjust these changed, we need to reflect these changed into the uh, SGEC standard. And also, uh, there is a enactment of the new law uh, regarding the Aino people. Ain Policy Promotion Act was enacted in 2019, and 
we needed to reflect uh, this act into our standard also. <laughs> and the third reason is that the previous HZEC standard documents is rather uh, complex because the uh, at the time or the many times of revision, we added the uh, new standards at the attachment of the uh, main standards. So that made our structure of standard documents very complex and it was difficult to uh, see the uh, uh, compliance or conformity of the, our standards with the PFC standards. So, uh, this time, we decided to reorganize our uh, standard documents so that it uh, correlate with the PFC standard documents. Uh, this shows the <coughs> a correlation between SGX standards, uh, revised SGX standards and the PFC standards. As you can see, the SGX revised standards is uh, almost one-to-one -one, uh, correlation with uh, PFC uh, standard uh, documents. And now let me look at the uh, major revised points of each document. For the standard document among operational rules, uh, expert uh, committee and the certification management committee was reorganized into the standard management committee. That is the charge of the standard setting and monitoring of the, uh, this standard. And uh, for the second document, standard document two, standard setting, it is stipulated that the SGX standards should reflect domestic laws and regulation, including particularly mentioning IN Policy Promotion Act. And the requirements for the standard management committee were uh, uh, defined and roles of the board of directors, councillors meeting and the standard management committee were uh, defined. Uh, regarding the standard document three, uh, sustainable forest management, uh, the, the previous uh, document, we had seven criteria, uh, but now uh, in the new document, we defined a six six criteria uh, that is almost correlate with the uh, six criteria uh, defined uh, in the PLC FS standard. And we moved uh, the th three, uh, we moved the seven cr criteria of the previous FM standard to annex one operational guideline. Uh, Forest plantation that is defined in the PFC FM standard is not defined in the SGEC FM standard uh, because the forest plantation uh, means basically the large scale industrial plantation of uh, often uh, by the exotic species. But man made forests in Japan is uh, mostly done by the small scale forest owners and the uh, planted species is uh, the indigenous species in Japan, sugi and the hinoki and with the technology adopted historically uh, in the long, for the long time, even sometimes uh, going back to Edo periods. So that we did not define forest plantation and man-made forests in Japan and treated equally as other forests. A tree outside forest is not defined in SGEC uh, standard, uh, but because the almost all the plain land in Japan is converted to the other land use and uh, trees in the uh, plain land is almost confined to uh, urban parks or uh, roadside trees and not uh, considered a significant meaning in terms of forest certification. The term conversion forest land use was used in SGEC uh, document and not used, uh, the forest conservation, uh, forest uh, conversion was not used in the SGEC uh, document uh, because uh, we 
don't define man-made forest in Japan as the forest plantation. Uh, the standard document uh, continuing SM uh, management, uh, Iron Policy Promotion Act uh, was, uh, the requirements were added according to the enactment of Iron Policy Promotion Act. And the uh, guide on ethnic implementation for Iron people oh, was added as ESSEC uh, guide document 321. Uh, and uh, Ainu people uh, was uh, indigenous people in La Japan uh, who live in particularly uh, uh, in Hokkaido and uh, closely uh, related to forests in its, uh, their rituals and their cultures. Uh, these uh, three species is the example of the species uh, which is a close connection with the culture of the Ainu people. The ESSEC POC Japan has been maintaining continuous uh, communication and consultation with Ainu Association of Hokkaido. And uh, uh, we have uh, participated in the uh, several awareness uh, raising events. This uh, left hand picture shows a seminar on international forest certification and Ainu people organized by the Ainu Association of Hokkaido in 2019. And uh, ICJIC PFC Japan attended and made a presentation uh, together with uh, people from FSC. And uh, the left-hand picture shows another uh, uh, seminar and field visit in a small town of Biratoli of Hokkaido that, that small town where the many Ainu people are living uh, now. And uh, we had a discussion uh, with the Ainu people living there with the possible uh, appropriate management uh, forests. Um, and also we, also we had participated to the seminar uh, to discuss the matters with Ainu people. Uh, for the SGIC uh, COC uh, uh, requirements, the revision reflects uh, in the most part uh, the revision of the PFC standards like uh, uh, control sources, 1%, 100% SGIC origin uh, management, including multi-site organizations or obligation of certificate holders to have uh, a trademark license. And also uh, division of three division of COC methods into three methods, and uh, strengthening of the DDS, and no placement of the illegal material to the market. These are all uh, already amended in the POC standard and reflected to the uh, this time revision of the SGIC standard. Uh, requirements for CB operating FM certification, uh, it, in principle, uh, these requirements was not changed or maintained uh, as a previous uh, standards. But the sampling requirements has deleted because these are all included in the standard for group forest management. Um, Requirements for CB operating COC certification has been already also amended, uh, almost exactly uh, reflected the content of the PFC standard, like a compliance with IAF and IST international guidance and standards. Uh, that, uh, the, the used term was changed to multi-site organizations. And also PFC COC standards was included in the scope of accreditation of the certification bodies operate SGX COC certification. Uh, SGX standard document six, six SGX trademark rules uh, also that uh, 
reflects the change of the PFC trademark rules, rules requirements for SG trademark usage to synergize with the PFC rules, including in direct on product usage of trademarks by retailers. However, in the SG uh, rules, usage of on product trademarks by FM certificate holders on their products is allowed in the SGEC uh, standard. So these are uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shigeru, for this very detailed presentation. Uh, I think it was very well focusing on the Japanese specification. So once again, thank you very much for all the efforts for putting this together. Uh, allow me to have a, a question because I think that there's, we have a small group now, just maybe for some of the viewers might be interesting that uh, you mentioned the, the Tiber legality uh, element considered during the development. And I just wanted to ask you that, was there also uh, similar legislation uh, considered like the EUTR or the American Lacey Act or uh, other legislation uh, applicable in other parts of the world, or you focused directly only on the Japanese legislation and legality? Thank you. Uh, for the timber legality system, um, it's mainly, our system is mainly focusing on the Japanese uh, domestic regulation, domestic law. Uh, in a couple of years, we had a Japan's government enacted a new law on the timber legality. Uh, so, uh, but it's not really strict as a EU regulation as a, or Lacey Act, but still it requires the, uh, uh, timber traders for the legality of the timber. And uh, uh, the, actually the forest certification uh, can be, uh, was, uh, is recognized as a measure to verify the timber legality in this system under the Japanese uh, law of the timber, regula timber legality system. Excellent, thank you very much for, for these details. Again, uh, I would like to thanks again for uh, joining uh, me today and explaining these details about Japanese forestry. I particularly was very interested to listen about the ownership uh, structure, what you have, which makes it very challenging to work with smallholders. And also I think the interesting fact about the fuel wood, which is now coming back as a new trend. So certainly something very interesting to consider in the next years and upcoming time. And I think there's nothing left to, to say, but uh, to thank you again, Kajiya-san and Takahara-san for joining me today. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, to continue the assessment with you. And I wish you a very nice rest of the day. Thank you very much.